Hey guys, welcome back to Jibber Jab Reviews. In today's show, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into the sleep tracking feature which is available on the Samsung smartwatches with the focus being on the new Watch Active 2 model. And keep in mind that unlike the Apple Watch, Samsung devices actually have that native app for monitoring your sleep. The question is though, how good is it? And if you're using sleep tracking regularly on your S3, maybe at the Galaxy Watch or the original Watch Active, then I would be interested in hearing your experiences as well because I've seen a lot of users complaining about the accuracy of the results online, which is partly why I wanted to run my own tests with the Active 2 to see if I would get similar results or maybe I would get more useful data. And if you're not familiar with the different sleep stages and what they're comprised of, then I'll also cover that as a high level overview, just so you have a better idea of the medical explanation behind it. And if you want a deeper understanding, then of course, Googling sleep stages and patterns is a good start. Although I will try to answer the basics of it here, and then we'll take a closer look at the data the watch was providing me overnight, and we'll compare it against the typical or average sleep cycles to see if the results can really be considered accurate or if the feature is really more of a gimmick. Okay, so with that being said, let me first give you a high overview of the sleep cycles you experience when you drift off at night. There are four stages of sleep, which are characterized as stage one to three, and then you have the REM sleep. And each stage represents a certain level of activity, both physically through body movements and with brain wave activity. Now stage one and two are considered light sleep and both stages are really combined into one measurement on the smartwatch and those results show up as light, which is that aqua colored text and bar. Now stage three is where things start to get interesting as this consists of delta brain waves and this is where waking up is really rare and it's considered the deep cycle. This is also tracked on the watch as deep and it's shown in that purple text and bar. And if we are assuming a typical eight hours of sleep as a gauge, well stages one to three of the sleep actually represents about four to seven hours of sleep, which will be the bulk of your measurements. Now the REM sleep stage is the most active period in terms of brain waves, as this is also known as the dream stage. So your brain is definitely more active here and it's also easier to be awakened when you're in this state. Now the typical duration of this stage is anywhere between 90 to 120 minutes at night. So again, this gives us a good gauge as to whether the watch is collecting accurate information during this period, which on the stats is identified as REM. And another thing that I want to mention about the sleep tracker is that you have two options to collect data while you sleep. You can record your REM sleep, which means the heart rate monitor is going to be activated and taking your pulse every 10 minutes to account for the REM sleep cycle. And this is because during a typical REM cycle, not only are your brain waves more active, but you can experience faster breathing, movement, and your heart rate increases as well. So basically what this means is that by leaving the continuous heart rate monitor option on, you're going to get more accurate sleep results than if you disable it. If you do disable it, then it still records your sleep, but it bases the data on movements only. So you should expect less accurate results than if it also measures your heart rate. Now the only advantage of turning the REM record option off is that you will save some battery power, but for my tests, I wanted to have the most accurate information I could get. So I left it on and to be honest, the decrease in battery life was minimal. I would say about 10% overnight. Okay, so now that you guys have some background on the different sleep stages and how the sleep tracker measures these activities, you can see that it appears that the results from mine are actually pretty accurate. Again, if we use the typical sleep stage results as a guideline, you can see that my REM is pretty close to the average by clocking in at two hours and 28 minutes. And then I had stages one to three coming in at a combined four hours and 38 minutes which is definitely within the range for typical sleep duration for those stages. And of course, the more that you wear your device while sleeping, the more data you're gonna be able to collect, which means you should see some patterns start to develop, which the tracker presents with your maximum sleep length and your week's average, which for mine, all appear to fall within those typical sleep stages. So overall, I'm pretty happy with these results. At least I'm not getting any crazy extremes 
but keep in mind that I did have the continuous heart rate monitor on each night, so turning this off may result in more skewed measurements. And let me know in the comments below if you guys track your sleep patterns or maybe give it a try for a week just to see what kind of results you get because I'd be interested in hearing if yours are outside the typical measurements you would expect to see and also let me know which device you have as that may also have a bearing on the results. Anyways, that wraps up another review. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned as we're going to be giving away more goodies again very soon. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Until then, take care. Thanks again for watching our review and if you liked it then show us some love with a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends because with your support it really helps me keep the channel going so I can continue to offer you guys discounts, giveaways and of course fresh content. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, take care.